So Duncan, we're here at uh, the WeShare Fest second day. Uh, I think the weather uh, you will recognize is from, uh, from the place where you're from originally. <laughs> you're from, uh, from Scotland. That's right, <laughs> this is very British weather and uh, <laughs> makes me feel at home. <laughs> yeah, so I'm from the Netherlands, so I'm also used to, uh, to, to, to this shitty weather. But uh, yesterday you also gave a talk over here. Um, we already met uh, each other about a, a couple of months ago, uh, also, yeah. also in Paris. That's right, at, at, uh, at the, uh, the uh, second, workshop uh, on the sharing economy. Yeah, yeah. And then you also presented your, uh, your new book, but first about your talk yesterday. Uh, what was the, the, the core of your story you want to share? Yeah, what I was trying to get across was the idea that we can really learn from cities when we like want to think about a sharing society and that we can particularly learn from cities that don't actually talk about themselves as sharing cities. Cities like Medellin in Colombia which uh, has used social urbanism to transform itself, really sets an agenda of social inclusion, shares an urban commons but doesn't use the, the trendy words or indeed uh, the commercial models of the sharing economy. Yeah. Yeah, so, 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 so well, what do you think is, is, is wrong with cities who claim to be a sharing city? Do you think they are too much on the more digital platform way and all the new things and they're forgetting about uh, looking to, to, to all what's, what's already happening for, for decades? Well, well, that's one of the problems, that they're, they're actually dismissing some expertise that lies in their own staff, indeed, <laughs> in sharing services like health and transport. Um, but it... I think it's really got a lot to do with the, the, the issue of smartness. So when the cities like San Francisco in particular pursue the goal of smartness, it's all about the economy. It's all about um, competition between cities. Whereas cities like Medellin are looking to network with other cities, to collaborate with their neighbouring areas. Um, and the economy is just something that uh, in a sense is built on a functioning society rather than underpinning it. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so maybe it's also the, 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 the basic starting point uh, with sharing cities is, 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 is more the basic starting point is, okay, we're going to, to, to give platforms uh, space to, uh, to, 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 to empower sharing. And uh, in your example, it's more about you take city and the, and, the, and the society as a starting point. Yeah, well the, the, the city is the platform, the, the urban commons is the platform that, that we want to start from and a focus that's too tight on technology and a focus that's too tight on the economic benefits makes us think about sharing as an economic phenomenon rather than as a social one and the problem there is that what it does to people. It, it treats them as these um, individualistic automatons of, of economic theory instead of as relational people. And our interdependence, our vulnerability to each other is why sharing is so important. And why it's, it is at heart a moral statement of what we want our future to be like. Yeah, yeah. and it's also not because uh, when you look at a sharing economy, it's more about uh, global and, and scalable. But when you look at cities and trust, it's more local and close communities. There is some of that, but this is, this is the, the sort of paradox of what I'm saying. I'm not dismissing the commercial side of sharing. And I actually argue that Airbnb and Uber are part of a broad sharing paradigm. We just need to understand where they're appropriate, why, and what risks they bring, as well as opportunities. So the good thing about modern, commercial, what we call intermediated sharing, is that it enables us to share with strangers. Traditional sharing in local communities, in king groups with families, it's great, but it's all about sharing with people like us. And yeah. the, the world is about actually sharing with people unlike us, sharing with others and understanding with and living with others. And it, it's odd, I find myself thinking that the sort of industrial revolution, the capitalist, capitalist revolution actually broke down um, barriers between communities. Mm. It, it made the world more cosmopolitan, but it's imposed a vision, an individualistic vision and a economic vision that makes us compete <laughs> with those others rather than cooperating with them.
Yeah. So we need to somehow keep the cosmopolitanism, the ability to share with strangers, but make it more cooperative. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, there are, there are so many nice things to think. But uh, where does your fascination about, about sharing and cities come from? I think it comes from my, my background as an environmentalist. And about almost 20 years ago, I was, over 20 years ago, I was working on cities for Friends of the Earth. Um, and environmentalists in those days, and I, I think too often today, still sort of have this uh, vision of a, a rural utopia, a rural Arcadia, as being the right way, the, the, the way to go. And 25 years ago, we were trying to say, well, actually, well-designed cities are the way we can sustainably um, support six billion, you know, nine billion heading for mm -hmm. people on this planet because they're actually shared ecosystems and shared e economic systems as well as ecological systems. And the efficiency that we get from sharing resources in cities, mm -hmm. and that's from the very basics of resources of land, the, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the transport systems, the buildings, those efficiencies mean that we can give a high quality of life to billions of people. In, yeah. a, in a fair and just way. Yeah, yeah, an interesting thing because now we're talking about sharing economy or, 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 or organized by platforms, but in the end, the government is also the organizer of uh, many shared facilities, uh, yeah. like, like uh, what you said. Yeah. That was also nice talk yesterday uh, of a bill who was really against government. She said, okay, government is, 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 is just a really expensive and inefficient intermediary <laughs> between demand and supply <laughs> in, in society. Mm. So. It's, it's reasonable to criticize governments. They're, they often do things wrong and they're not always working in the interests of people. That's typically because they've been co-opted by the interests of capital rather than that the people who are working for them yeah. don't want to be more cooperative. So in my talk, I talked about four forms of intermediaries, the four C's, the commercial, the civic, the charitable, and the communal. And I think the point is, from the share, point of view of the sharing paradigm, is that we need to facilitate all of those. There are things that are far better facilitated by government platforms, and there are things that are far bit better facilitated by the people themselves. Yeah. And working that out, sharing the power between those levels is what matters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I also have many discussions about because there are, when you look at sharing economy, there are, uh, there are some platforms who are more focused on, 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 on scaling and money. There are more platforms who are more focused on the social part, but they have many problems, or many of them they have problems with, with, with finding a good business model. And you also can ask, okay, but how can government, a city or, 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 or a country, how, how can government be a better government by using and facilitating other, uh, 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 other platforms yeah. to become a better government? And then you also can say, okay, maybe like in Belgium, they, they got a really brilliant word for it in, 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 in Belgium, but it's, 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 uh, they say uh, that there are some organizations where they say, okay, we as a government see you as a useful organization for society, so we provide you for uh, five years of, 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 of money. And I think also maybe some platforms are also really good for uh, building a good society. And maybe we can also get uh, or, or, or give some funding to these platforms to, to, uh, to really build a sustainable model and that's to be, uh, yeah, well, the, going the, to in the money part. There's two levels here and they're both important. So governments and particularly city governments can really support um, sharing intermediaries of, of all forms by the sort of active provision of, of resources, but also by um, procuring from them, by using them to, to provide public services. And then at the higher level, what we need to remember is that the, the structure of the economy, which determines what business models work and don't work, is actually a product of a collective process of regulation. We've agreed, well, we, we haven't <laughs> agreed, but society has yeah. sort of notionally contracted to allow for the, the capitalist model that says, mm -hmm. okay, we have these sort of rules of contract, we have mm -hmm. these, these rules of money formation, and those structure the way the economy runs today. Um, yes, we might dream of a revolutionary way of overturning this, mm -hmm. 
I argue instead that we need to look for what they call subversive ways of t turning around that system, of introducing yeah. new economic regulation into the system. And that's where actually experimenting with things like alternative currencies, time mm -hmm. banks, and the sharing economy, yeah. I think governments can learn that there are alternatives to the, the, the formal capitalist system. Yeah. And, and when you look at, 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 at uh, all the, all, all the initiatives you, uh, you research uh, also uh, 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 when you're writing your book, what I see is, is that, that there are many really good best practices, but they're really internal focused. Uh, mm. So in what way do you think that all these good examples can, can share their best practices, but also their worst practices, so in the end that you can replicate the best practices uh, within cities? This is a really challenging one because the Again, the, the conventional model says sort of one thing. It says, okay, you, you scale up, and then it says if you can't scale up, then, then you replicate. The question, I think, is what it, what it is you need to replicate, because context matters so much about what is effective. Um, there, are, uh, there are cities and cultures where I think it's entirely right to be banning Uber and Airbnb, because they are undermining conventional sharing that is that is healthy and, and good. Um, in the most individualistic American states, I'm sure they create new social contacts that people are, are not getting when they're barricaded in their homes with their AK-47s. Sorry to slightly caricature slightly. <laughs> Western, <laughs> Western American society, but um, so context matters. But there are, I think, some principles that we can uh, look at for what needs to be shared. And a lot of that is about genuine participation. It's actually about having um, deliberative approaches that bring the users in um, and allow you to develop a model that is sensitive to that context. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are many studies now around sharing in cities, uh, many of them. Uh, uh, yeah. We also uh, <laughs> talked about them uh, the last time uh, we, uh, we met. Aren't we making it it's all too difficult? Aren't we just trying to, to analyze it to death? And, it, and can we just say, OK, come on, these are the principles and just do your thing? You'll always find academics analyzing things to death. It's what <laughs> academics do. Um, they have, have lovely battles over how you categorize things and what the boundaries of everything are. And yeah, it can get really excessive and whether whether we're right to talk about sharing cities or an urban commons or sharing economy it it can be academic but it can also be really critical to how these things are framed in the public imagination yeah. and what that how that means people perceive them so we do at the moment have this real battle of people are seeing it as a sharing economy and that means they do one of two things they they get into the, the sort of gung-ho mode of cheering on this new source of economic wealth mm -hmm. if they're that sort of person or they reject it and yeah. actually we need a much more considered reaction yeah. so the the categorization and the analysis is important what is also important i think is letting cities experiment that would be what i would say in terms of getting on with it recognize that there's lots of opportunities there's lots of different approaches in different cultures allow and then facilitate cities to do that um, and collaborate with cities that, that wanted it that. And the, yeah. the Amsterdam approach, I think, has been exemplary in that respect, that there's been a, a sort of bottom-up push mm. to get the city to adopt the sharing city label. And it's, as a result, got a very d rich diversity of approaches, mm. and it's treating it quite experimentally. Yeah, yeah. And uh, talking about experiments, so uh, what when I had here a bag with one million euro and I said, okay, Duncan, I give you one uh, million euro to do one experiment in the city. <laughs> what would you do with it? Um, I'd, I'd try and set up what I call the sharing hub. I'm not sure where, um, I might try it locally to me in Stockholm or I might go so, be more likely to go somewhere like Barcelona or possibly in, into Latin America. A sharing hub is something that is publicly financed, publicly coordinated, but brings together all the different platforms in the city, provides access to everyone in an inclusive way, 
and on the back of it that the city would guarantee the reputation of the citizens in the system. So it didn't depend on the sort of um, rating systems, mm. didn't depend on knowing someone or trusting the colour of their face as we see often happening with Airbnb. Mm. There would be a guarantee put in place by the city to make sure that their citizens could be part of it. Yeah. Yeah, so then you, uh, so then you can so then you can also provide for, uh, uh, from the city a kind of a, a also a, a idea system uh, f uh, which uh, people can use for other platforms uh, uh, they want to use in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. And last thing, your, uh, your book uh, it's now published about a couple of months Six ago. Six months. Six months ago. Time flies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the name of the book? It's called Sharing Cities: A Case for Truly Smart and Sustainable Cities, published by. Um, MIT Press, and given that we're here at WeShare, I'm sure I can give the uh, discount code for <laughs> WeShare participants is XOU16. Cool. So order it on the MIT website and you can get a, a discount with that code. Right. <laughs> and then at the end, when you've read it, share it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Or get your library to, to buy a copy and then it'll be shared naturally. <laughs> also a good one. <laughs> okay, so thanks uh, for the interview and uh, let's Martin. share a beer this, this evening. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.